In this uh, lecture, we are going to finish up the different types of reactions. Last class, we covered composition and decomposition reactions, and we are going to go over single replacement, double replacement, and combustion reactions today. So uh, we should, again, these are the same objectives from last class, so you don't have to copy them down. So you should be able to recognize the type of reaction, and we should be able to predict products of the chemical reaction based on reactants. So, single replacement reactions. Uh, this is uh, the new stuff right here. You guys are going to want to copy this down. In a single replacement reaction, we, uh, an ionic compound is reacting with an element. And the element replaces the appropriate part of the compound. And for that, you'd have to take a look at your ion list. Uh, a non-metal is going to replace an anion. A metal replaces a cation. Because we all know metals have positive charges, because cats have paws, right? Cats have paws. So, in this case, we have copper 2 nitrate reacting with magnesium. So, this is our compound reacting with our element. And you see, the nitrate ends up with the magnesium. It's switched partners. So, I like to think about this as. A couple on a date, copper and nitrate. And nitrate is uh, not getting along with copper. Copper called nitrate ugly, which is a big no-no on a date. So then magnesium was out there and said, hey, that guy's being a jerk. Why don't you come on out with me? And she's like, yeah, he is being a jerk. That's copper all alone, all alone, and now copper's by himself. Hopefully, probably not. He's very selfish. So, in, and kind of look at that here on the bottom one. You have aluminum and chloride together reacting with fluorine. In this case, we, we replace the anions. So, aluminum ends up going with fluorine. It ends up with fluorine in the end. So, you have to make sure you're paying attention. Here you have your anion and your nonmetal replacing uh, each other. So, moving forward... Here's a model of single replacement reaction. There we go. So you have copper 2 chloride it reacting with oxygen. So the copper goes with the oxygen and leaves chlorine alone. I'm missing a chlorine. Oh well. There should be another chlorine right there. But so you see how the copper, the positive, goes with the uh, anion, uh, goes with the element oxygen to form copper oxide, and it's uh, important that the ones with the opposite charges go together. We all know the ion oxide has a negative 2 charge. Copper has a positive 2 charge. The element oxygen has no charge, but oxide, the ion that oxygen forms, is a negative 2. So that's how you can tell it goes with the copper, because the positives go with the negatives. Opposites attract. All right? Moving on. Whoops. Oh, diatomic elements. Elements that always exist in pairs for their elemental state. Basically, when they're not bonded with other things, they're always together. I call them the honorable seven. Call them honorable because you have H O N. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And if you look in the periodic table over here, they kind of make a seven with the periodic table. N O F C L B R I. They make the number seven, including hydrogen. So that's one way you can remember them. So that's why, let's go back to the previous example. Here we have O2, oxygen. That's the element oxygen. It's always in pairs. Here we have the element chlorine, always in pairs when it's in its elemental state. And that's why here when we have the element fluorine, it's F2. And here the element chlorine is Cl2. Not necessarily that way in a compound, though. So take a look. ALF3, you have to make the correct compound. So... Double replacement. 
Double replacement reactions when two ionic compounds switch anions or cations, depending on which way you look at it. 